So my first gut reaction when seeing the release of this watch was something along the lines of, well, we've all seen the Zenith Daytona. This is just ridiculous. And isn't it funny how many of us have jumped onto this bandwagon comparing this watch to the ceramic Daytona. That in part is due to the bezel insert and the handset and the symmetrical subdials. But beyond that, this watch is by no means a departure from Zenith's design identity. It's just become a fact that we liken so many designs to the ones that we see the most often. And in the case of the Rolex ceramic Daytona, it's everywhere. It's ingrained into our minds. So a small change, a small adjustment, like the introduction of a ceramic insert on a model like this, drives everyone mad. And these two new releases, the Chrono Master Sport, has gained a lot of media coverage over the last few days. Whether it is in part due to the fact that it shares this relationship with its rival, or that they're actually celebrating the watchmaking and what makes this piece so prominent and well worth your attention, I don't know. I honestly don't know why this watch has gotten so much publication in such a short amount of time, but there are many good practical reasons why it deserves it. And if I can sum up the Chrono Master Sport in one word, it is potential. This watch has so much potential tied to it. First point I'd like to address is a brand receiving attention. Now Zenith has produced some amazing watches in the past, extremely popular ones too, but they've never had this form of coverage, I don't believe. Just last week I made a video all about watch collecting. I'll put it in the corner of the screen. And in it I mentioned that a specific release from one brand can draw your attention to a completely new avenue. And this watch, I believe, manages to do just that. For a lot of us in this space who want to appreciate a well-made chronograph from a very respectable brand, this is the kind of watch you should be looking at. But that's something I will close on at the end of this video. Next is comparing the Daytona to the El Primero. I think it's one of the primary reasons why everyone is jumping on this. When you're looking at value for money, value proposition next to the Daytona, with this you have a chronograph that uses pump pushes. It has a clear case back so you can appreciate the beautiful movement. It uses a lot more color. It has a dead complication. There is a lot more variety. There's a lot more bang for your buck with this model, understandably so. I don't see any rivalry here. Most of us probably know that the Zenith El Primero movement is famous and was originally used in the first automatic Daytonas dating back to the 1980s. The way you can easily differentiate the Zenith movements is the symmetry that the subdials have on the models. And in an image, I've featured them all lined up together for you to see. But when we compare the new Chrono Master Sport next to the Panda Daytona, we can see that the Chrono Master features a much more traditional aesthetic in virtually every way. Larger crown, again, pump pushes, the case form is a lot less organic, it's more rigid, much more classical, and we'll focus on those design aspects in a moment. A very quick glance, we could easily mistake this watch with a Daytona, but other than that, no, I don't see the characteristics shared between them. So understanding the revival of this watch and what it's representing, let's look at those aspects. Most important of all is that it takes its primary design DNA from the A386, which was the first El Primero that used the tricolor subdial arrangement. This is without a doubt the most prevalent and important design attribute that the Zenith El Primero has carried on throughout the years. And it's a key trait. It's one of the design motifs they have used with virtually every single model in the El Primero line, save for some of the skeletonized variants and the Panda models. The tricolor arrangement of the subdials, fading grays to navy blue, and the accent of red on the seconds hand it's what we could class as the true El Primero image. But there is a lot more to this watch to appreciate beyond the front on face. Looking at the form of this watch's case, it's one of the best in the industry, I believe. The shortness of the lug span and the curvature is just as identifiable as the tricolor layout. It's so ubiquitous when we look at the El Primero line. Another key trait is the use of articulating center links, generally a good blend of brushing and polishing between case and bracelet. This is all followed through here. So visually, when looking at all the components, it checks the boxes. You might be surprised to know that this is not the first Chrono Master that Zenith has ever produced. In fact, they created a 50th anniversary a few years back, and the watch looks almost identical. You can see it on the screen now. On the far right is the 50th, on the left-hand side the A386, and in the middle is the new Chrono Master Sport. And you can see the identity is virtually the same, even down to the bezel on the Chrono Master 50th. The caliber of this watch is where the real potential shines and where the most important features come out. The updated 3600 caliber is a streamlined arrangement of the original 400. Better assembled, more modified, 
easier to manufacture, better materials, all the things that we want. But more important of all, the chronograph, the chronograph hand being able to record a tenth of a second is one of the best uses of a chronograph complication that I think we can all agree in recent years. Now we know Zenith and their complications. We know that they produce chronographs that calculate one one hundredth of a second. They do create some of the best automatic column wheel chronograph movements in the industry. This is well known. And the Calibre 3600 is not a new complication. It's been around for a while. This is just the first time it has become mainstream and is now in regular production. The standout feature to this watch is the bezel insert, and I cannot emphasize this enough. Let's pretend that all chronographs adopted this kind of movement. 36,000 vibrations per hour, being able to measure a tenth of the second using the chronograph hand. I have a strong belief that the modern iterations of chronographs would do away with the tachymeter bezel, with the pulsation bezel. My impression of this arrangement, to me, feels as groundbreaking in the chronograph space as the dive bezel is for the dive watch. In the world of chronos, it's so good to see a bezel that is practical, and this one does it so well. Not only are we looking at such a great use of symmetry and balance, but it also doesn't look cluttered, doesn't look out of place, it looks focused, very much like the dive bezels that we have come to know and love. So the design aspects of this watch, let's get into the details a little bit more. Neither of these pieces really jumped out at me at first, which is quite surprising. The issue when you're dealing with something that is so symmetrical, so clean, is it's difficult to latch onto one element that really grabs your attention. Now true, this is pitch perfect when you look at Zenith's design identity. I just wanted some X factor, a little bit more X factor to jump out at me. Of the two, the model that caught my attention the most was the black dial. And if I'm not mistaken, it's very seldom that Zenith uses tricolor arrangements on a black dial model. So that is something that stands out. But me being me, I had a bit of fun playing around with some alterations in a few places. The black bezel on the white dial model looked a bit too aggressive, so I played around with grey inserts instead. Eventually decided to call it the grey scale and push the entire dial in a similar direction. So we see this fade of grey working from the bezel around the subdials with the red accent for the chronograph hand. Now that might be a bit too extreme of a departure away from the new release, so in order to counteract that, I added a few more additions that didn't seem too invasive. Referring back to the A386 as the inspiration, looked at the black insert that runs around the dial, which I think completes the image so much more on the classic model, and incorporated that onto the dial of the new release. We've seen many watches, predominantly vintage chronographs, incorporate a similar theme, and I think what it does is not only pushes the size of the white dial down a little bit more, adds a bit more contrast and also a better relationship between the bezel and the dial itself. Seeing these two watches together now with these alterations, time telling might be a lot easier. The eye can break away from the standard color of the dial, look at the highlighted zone. And as far as the fully red chronograph hand goes, I think it's one of the core traits of the Zenith El Primera and it just completes the image a lot more. But it has been a lot of fun looking into this watch. The new release has been successful. The Chronomaster Sport has gained a lot of attention, a lot of praise, a lot more appreciation, not only for its design and its move to go in a bit more of a modern direction, but also because of what it's offering us. Many would agree that when we're comparing this to the Daytona and that argument again, the Daytona is a watch that represents fashion, style, very much recognizability in our watch space. The El Primero has always been the thinking man's chronograph. You know you're getting a watch with an amazing history, backstory behind a caliber that has seen so many brands to success. The question we have to ask is who would this watch appeal to the most? And part of this watch's success, I believe, is that it's been able to tap into many different avenues. It will appeal to the Zenith enthusiast, the vintage enthusiast, new time buyers in the sports chronograph space. It's a model that I believe in many ways is relatable. It pushes the idea of modernity onto you, but doesn't sacrifice its design identity in the process. But more than anything, it is pushing its potential as a watchmaker, improving its in-house complications and the practicality aspect of what the chronograph is capable of doing as a daily wearing watch. That is the Chronomaster Sport.